When I was a kid and just got into filmmaking, I saw videos of these huge Hollywood sets with a massive amount of gear and camera operators. I thought that making professional movies like this is going to be out of reach for me as it would be just too expensive and complicated. But as you all know, technology in the filmmaking world is advancing faster than ever and with this the gap between huge film production companies and creators like you and me started to get smaller and smaller. As I realized the potential in this, my goal back then was to create films that look as good as big budget productions, but without a big crew or super expensive gear. Just by myself, a one-man army if you want to call it like that. I wouldn't say that I already reached this goal, but I sure as hell got a lot closer to it because I now land projects for clients like Audi or Mercedes. And if I would have to choose one type of gear that really boosted my career in filmmaking, I think I would choose gimbals. They can replace so many other tools if you know how to use them properly. You can get shots that look like they were filmed on an expensive dolly, a slider, a crane or even on a Russian arm when you do car to car shots. And while a gimbal is such a versatile tool that you can use in any kind of situation, it only costs a fraction of the price compared to the other ones. And it's also set up in less than a minute while you have to put in a lot of effort and a lot of rigging when it comes to all of these other tools like dollies, cranes and whatsoever. So gimbals make your footage look super cinematic without the need of a lot of manpower or a lot of money. So I think that gimbals actually close the gap between huge production companies and smaller creators like myself even more. And that is actually the reason why in today's video we're going to talk all about gimbals. We're going to talk about if you actually need a gimbal for your projects or if you don't need one. And I'm also going to show you three of my best tips that I learned over the last years when it comes to operating gimbals. So let's go. That wasn't really smooth. <laughs> so I've been shooting on a Xeon Crane V2 for the last four years. It was actually the first gimbal that I bought and I was super happy with it because it performed really well with my Sony a6500 but as soon as I put bigger camera setups on it like for example the Sony a7 III the motors were actually struggling a little bit and I couldn't do all the movements that I wanted to do. So that's the reason why I was looking for a new gimbal and I saw the Xeon Crane 3S coming out but it just felt way too big for me. I'm a guy who wants to fit his gimbal and all of his other stuff just into one backpack and to be ready to shoot and also while shooting I want to be flexible like run from one spot to the other and I can still shoot with a backpack on my back like I have right now but as soon as I have like two backpacks on my back it's already impossible to just like focus on your shot. <laughs> But lucky as I am, a few weeks ago, this happened. I received an email from Xeon in which they said, a secret uncovered to you. We are launching a new generation of the Crane 2 later this month. And right now, we are looking for the earliest creators to generate content with it and promote it. So I was like, hell yeah, ship this bad boy to me ASAP. Okay, that's not exactly what I said. Alright, so here it is, the all new Xeon Crane 2S. It looks pretty sick from first sight, um, but as you all know, I don't care about every single spec of my gear, so I won't go into detail about all the new features, but here are some of the most important things you should know about this thing. Stronger motors, increased payload, double safety mechanism, digital and mechanical focus control, vertical quick release mount, bigger screen, carbon fiber handle, removable batteries and a dope ass design. Ah. 
Okay guys, to be completely honest and transparent with you right from the start, I want to let you know that Xeon was actually kind enough to sponsor this video. And it's super cool that a well-known company like Xeon reached out to me. So yeah, it's the first sponsored video. Woo! Okay, let's get back to the topic. Why do we use gimbals? Most of the time we just use gimbals because the motion of the camera is just really, really smooth and soft. So you're able to focus a lot better on what's happening in the frame. As a lot of the new cameras already have a pretty good in-body stabilization built into the camera, there are many creators who say, you don't really need a gimbal, just shoot handheld. Gimbals are for p <laughs> so there is the question, do you really need a gimbal? And I see it this way. You can definitely get smooth and cool handheld shots, but for specific situations, you just can't really replace a gimbal. If you shoot handheld, but you still want to get a perfectly smooth shot, you're kind of limited in some ways, because it may work quite well if you have like short slow motion clips and you just move your body a little bit, you can definitely get really, really smooth shots with that. But as soon as you make a step or you walk for a bit, people are going to notice and and it won't just look as good as a gimbal. Also, if you plan to shoot real time instead of slow motion, I would definitely recommend a gimbal because yeah, it's just impossible to hold a shot handheld for more than two seconds if you have like a longer movement. I mean, you can only do it for like uh, this tiny bit and after that it's just not possible anymore because for us humans it's just super difficult to stabilize all of these five axes at the same time. I guess only chicken can do that. <laughs> Okay, jokes aside, to sum it up, for scenarios where you as the camera operator have to move a lot while shooting, a gimbal is definitely a must-have if you want to go for a smooth shot. But sometimes you don't even want to have a smooth shot. It always depends on your situation and the kind of emotion and feeling that you want to transport. There are also situations where you kind of want to transport a hectic feeling. For example, if you're on board with a racing driver or if you are being chased by the bad guys, you kind of want the viewer to feel that same emotion as also the actors are feeling or as the characters are feeling. <laughs> So before you shoot, always think about which feeling you want to transfer to the viewer instead of unintentionally just throwing a camera on a gimbal just to get a smooth shot. If you want to create a really authentic atmosphere, it can definitely make sense to shoot handheld if you properly do it. Gimbal movements always look really cinematic and they just look perfect, but they're definitely not the right choice for every situation. So there's no exact answer to the question of whether or not you need a gimbal. Yeah, I, I never really answer your questions, right? But yeah, it just always depends depends on what you shoot and what kind of look you go for. But I can tell you from my experience that I was definitely able to pull off some really, really crazy and cool shots with gimbals. And I think especially if you shoot a lot of content in the sports and automotive scene, a gimbal is definitely a must have. But as it is with everything, you have to practice a lot with your gimbal in order to get the perfect shot. So that's why I actually put together three of my top tips that I learned over the last couple of years in order to also help you to get the most out of your gimbal. So let's go. Okay, tip number uno, learn how to walk. Your gimbal stabilizes three out of five axes while the chicken stabilizes all of them. That's why its head is staying at the same position all the time. But with your gimbal, it only stabilizes pan, tilt and roll. So the gimbal doesn't really stabilize any movements you do vertically and horizontally while just moving by yourself. So you have to kind of like smooth out those movements with your arms and with your legs. And I see many people just running to the stores, buying a gimbal, throwing on the camera and just like running around without any effort of walking smoothly. So many people think the gimbal is going to do all of the work for them and they don't put any effort into it, but that's not how it works. I made a small comparison of what the footage looks like when I shoot with really like stiff arms and stiff legs compared to actually smoothing out all of these movements. And you can definitely see that in the first one, you can kind of like see all of these small micro jitters. You can see kind of like a wobbling going on in the background just because you're moving 
movement, your vertical movement is not really smoothed out. In many situations, I like to shoot with my gimbal upside down or as Zion calls it, the inverted mode. So basically you just take the handle and put it on the top of the camera, you just flip it around and when your camera is on the bottom, it actually gets a lot easier for you to smooth out all of the movements because most of the weight is below your arms. And on top of that, if your camera is really close to the ground, you often get really interesting and dynamic perspectives just because the ground is rushing by in front of your camera. And yeah, it just gives you an overall depth and kind of like emotion and speed. I personally shoot in upside down mode most of the time. Probably I'm shooting in upside down mode for like 70% just because it's so much more stable. Sometimes I even run around if I'm filming like at the same height as my face, I'm running around like this just because it's a lot more stable. I'm not sure if, if, if that's just me. I, I look like a goblin if I do it. Yeah, it just works out for me. <laughs> so yeah, to sum it up, practice with your gimbal as much as you can and learn how to properly walk. As stupid as that sounds, it really makes a difference. After some time, you will get so used to the movements that the gimbal actually feels like an extension of your body. And that's when the magic happens. Let's get to the next tip. Tip number two, diversify your movements. There's an infinite variety of gimbal movements you can do, which is the beautiful thing about those tools. Here are a couple of examples. Follow, reveal, orbit or parallax, dolly in, dolly out, slider, pan up or pan down, and the average crazy POV shot. When I see other people filming with gimbals, they often do the same shot or same movement over and over again, instead of capturing a variety of shots. Probably the most used ones of these is the orbit shots or parallax shots. I mean, it's a great shot. I also use it a lot because it separates the foreground from the background quite well, so it gives your image a lot of depth and it also shows your character or your object from its different sides. So it's definitely a shot that kind of like has its standing. Still, you would like to have like a variety of shots to choose from because it happened a lot of times to me that after shooting, when I started with the edit, I kind of realized Shit, I only have like this like parallax shot to choose from and no other shots like a pan up or a reveal shot or any kind of other stuff. And to get better at diversifying your movements, it always helps to plan your shots beforehand. I use shot lists for most of my videos to just know which shots I want to get at that specific location at that time. Don't limit yourself to just one movement and instead just get a variety of shots. Does that help? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Okay, so my last tip is to adjust your settings to your needs. With my old Xeon Crane V2, I just used the standard settings all of the time because I was just too lazy to adjust them for my specific shoots. But it actually makes a huge difference. And with the Crane 2S, you can adjust all of these parameters like speed or smoothness of the different axes right at the handle of the gimbal, or you can also do it via the Xeon Play app. You just connect your phone via Bluetooth to your gimbal, and then you can set different presets with uh, different parameters. I like to have at least two different presets so that I have the perfect responsiveness of my gimbal to each situation. If I shoot for example sports I would use my fast preset or if I shoot products and I want to have like a really slow speed and a very smooth gimbal then I use my slow preset so it definitely makes sense to kind of like build those presets for yourself to just test out the different settings until you find what suits you best and yeah I think that makes your life just a whole lot easier so yeah definitely do that. All right, so that was it with my three quick tips and now we are going to switch back again to the studio. All right, and we're back in the studio, which is actually just my one room apartment. I don't know why I said studio in that last clip. <laughs> okay, so I've been testing the Xeon Crane S now for, I think it was five days now. I have to say that I got to like this gimbal more and more by each day. In the beginning, I had to get a little bit used to it as I was just used to the V2 and some things are a little bit different, um, but I have to say I got to like it more and more. As you can see, I already took off the extension of the back axis that I have a better view 
view on the monitor. This is what it looks like. Uh, this one was right here before. And actually, I don't really know why Xeon delivers it with the extension because on the internet, I think everybody just took it off and I don't see any use in having like a longer axis here. Um, it's just in the way. So the motors of this gimbal are absolutely insane. Um, I had my A6500 setup on it. Um, I was sure that it's going to carry this one, but I also put the 1DX of a friend of mine on it and it was, yeah, it was able to carry that one as well and it was quite stable. So the motors are actually, yeah, they're super strong. That is actually a big, big deal because then you can use zoom lenses or you can also just mount a microphone on it and yeah, you don't have any issues with it. And that's actually also one point that I like a lot about this gimbal is that I was able to put my microphone on top of it and I was still able to revert it into upside down mode and still use it because there's a lot of clearance with the top axis then. I was always looking for a setup where I can mount my microphone and still shoot b-roll so that I have less work with sound design like just adding different atmospheres and ambiences. So yeah, that's something I really liked about it. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on the table. <laughs> Still, after testing it for a few days, I have to say that with my A6500, I think I would prefer a gimbal which would be a little bit smaller, probably something like the Weeble S. I never tested it out, but I think it would be a better fit for my A6500. But there's one thing I didn't tell you yet, which is that I'm going to upgrade to the Sony A7S 3 in the next months. I'm going to pre-order it in, in the next couple of days, mostly because I want a flip screen and better battery life. So I think it's going to be an absolute beast setup together with the Crane 2S. It's actually Actually, the dream setup that I always wanted to have. So yeah, I think overall this gimbal is really good. I think it's a great all-rounder. Um, I always like to have one setup that works in every scenario instead of having like different sizes, different setups. I always want one setup which works everywhere. And I think that uh, the Sony a7S III together with this gimbal is going to be that setup. So I hope I could give you a good overview about gimbals and hopefully you even learned something new with my three tips. And yeah, if you also think about buying a gimbal, I can definitely recommend the Xeon Crane 2S. Just in general, I really like the Xeon products. If you want to buy the Crane 2S, you can find a link to it in the description. I'll get a small commission if you buy it via my link. And yeah, I think that's that's everything I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you didn't subscribe already, you can definitely do that. Uh, we are already 10,000 people now. It's, it's going actually quicker than I expected because my drone videos are blowing up. So thank you a lot for your constant support, guys. And I'm going to see you in the next one. So have a great one and goodbye.